Hi, welcome to this uh, NPTEL MOOC course on maintenance and repair of concrete structures. Uh, today's lecture we will give you an intro to the course, basically go through why a course like this is important and uh, different modules in this course. And on the screen the picture which you are seeing is uh, uh, an aerial view of a major construction project and surroundings in Chennai city. And the objective of this course is there are many projects like this in various parts of the country and we need to ensure that these structures, uh, you know, first of all they do not uh, face much of repair, but if they face a repair and then or if they need repair then that repair should also uh, last uh, very long or durable repair. So, that is the idea of uh, floating a course like this and uh, so we will see more. So, now India is actually witnessing a construction boom. We are constructing a lot of highways, uh, seaports, airports, residential and commercial building both in urban and rural areas. So, a lot of construction is happening uh, today. As you see on the bottom left, you can see there is a, you know, a single house and a, uh, another picture on a rural housing and then also on urban housing, multi-story apartment complexes, etc. And with the aim of giving housing for all uh, Indians. So, but we have a lot of these projects going on and uh, if we do not, uh, you know, ensure that these projects are built with quality uh, or durability in mind then we will end up in having huge uh, repair and maintenance activities and sometimes we not we may not be able to even handle uh, that magnitude of repair work so that's a real concern and uh, makes this course very important in that way uh, so in short we need to keep these structures safe and usable for long period of time which could be several decades depending on the type of structure and without much maintenance and repair. That is a key point without much maintenance and repair because if we are thinking about just keep on repairing and maintaining then that is not really a big challenge. So, building structures with durability in mind and ensuring that the repair works are minimal and at the same time if we do repair then making sure that the repair is also lasting uh, for as uh, you know for long period of time as desired by various projects. So, this is the uh, you know need for this course. Let us look at what is the scenario today especially for the bridge sector in India concrete bridges or even uh, you know in general bridges whether it is made of concrete or steel. So, recently the government of India conducted a survey of about 1.7 lakhs of bridges uh, by this was done through the program on in Indian bridge management system IBMS uh, by the ministry of uh, road transport and highways government of India. Now, they found that 6000 bridges are structurally distressed which is maybe like you know for a country like this you know I, I seriously feel the actual number could be much more because sometimes we find it very difficult to get data and even if we get data the quality or correctness of that data is another question. So, and now this covers only bridges now what about buildings there are so many buildings also uh, in our country which are of different uh, quality and of different age. So, we means we have a lot of old buildings and new buildings which are being built today. So, we have a huge task or Herculean task of maintaining the existing concrete infrastructure not only bridges and buildings, but many other and building new ones with durability and corrosion resistance in consideration. Why I say corrosion resistance because that is the or one of the most important deterioration mechanism or which is widely observed in many uh, concrete structures. Now, let me tell you like you know uh, again the need for a course like this. Today many civil engineering curriculum they have these three courses which are in written in blue text construction materials, structural analysis and design related courses and also concrete technology which is again sometimes given as an elective course 
Uh, what I am trying to tell here is the materials are not the concrete materials or the construction materials are not given adequate importance in uh, some of the civil engineering curriculum. So, you know for example, the concrete technology which is coming as an elective, uh, maybe it is time for us to rethink on this or you know we need to like a civil engineer when they graduate if they are going to go for construction sector, they should know what the concrete is and what the construction materials are. Okay. So, and we end up in having you know premature structural and material failures because adequate importance is not given for the uh, materials which are sometimes used. So, we need to have a gen next generation of engineers with adequate knowledge on what can go wrong in concrete structures and then uh, and if they go wrong how to repair them with uh, you know uh, good quality and also when you say quality repair, but again there are no uh, formal courses are not available in the uh, uh, for understanding repair of concrete structures. There are documents and information available, but there is no formal uh, courses available uh, in many institutes. So, I think this course will also help fill that gap. Now, another thing is we need generalists for sure or general civil engineers, but we also need specialist or repair specialist that is very very important. By the end of this course you will know that there are many things which are which need to be taken care while designing a repair for a concrete structure. So, we really need specialist uh, who are you know trained and skilled to take up a repair work. Now, let us say what are the reasons for failure of repairs? This is not failure of the concrete structures from the beginning, but the failure of the repair which was uh, undertaken on the structures. So, you can see that about 16 percentage of repair failures happened because of incorrect diagnosis or in other words without really understanding the root cause of the problem original problem. So, that led to the failure of the repair. Then again about 38 percentage of the failure happened because of failure of repair happened because of inappropriate design of the repair work. About 15 percent failure uh, about 15 percentage of repairs failed because of inappropriate specification or inappropriate choice of materials and again 19 percent uh, because of poor workmanship and 12 percent for other factors. So, definitely the first three if you see that is something which is very very important and poor workmanship is also equally important. So, definitely we need to know what is the root cause, cause of the initial damage and then proper design of repair and in, a, in you know accurate you know appropriate choice of specification and uh, materials or design of specifications and materials all these are very uh, important definitely poor workmanship need to be. Uh, um, workmanship need to be enhanced. Now, in the two slides ago I said specialists are required to do a quality repair. These are some of the examples I am going to show you where it was done by a generalist you know and then repair itself failed very fast. So, one thing when we talk about repair is that many aspects should be considered while selecting a repair methodology or a repair technique or repair material or the way in which it is repaired. Now, you can see on the picture on the left side there is a column which is spalled, it is not the same column, but I just wanted to show you this to convey the message. This is again a picture I got from the website. You can see that on the right side this portion is actually repaired, patch repaired, but again it cracked right along the rebar. That means, the that for this particular repair the corrosion which is happening inside the concrete structure of the steel inside the concrete structures was not arrested. It was just a cosmetic repair just covering it up that is not really going to solve the problem and in this type of cases what usually happens is you will go back to the same structure again in about 4 to 5 years and then by that time again it cracks and then you will keep on doing this repair. Okay. For, for a small element maybe you know you might not realize the impl cost implications, but when you talk about large structures definitely it really influences the life cycle cost 
of the structure. So, we have to keep the life cycle cost to be minimal that means the quality of repair should be very very good and it should address the root cause of the problem. On the right side you see the picture which is a core taken from roof of a building and you can see there is one layer, second layer, third, fourth, so many layers of waterproofing uh, because the water was keep on leaking and it was failing and then you see the thickness of the roof element increased from about 10 centimeter from the beginning to about 30 plus centimeters which is really not a good practice. So, the repair work again was not good in the first case when they started leaking they put another overlay again an overlay. So, multiple overlays were kept on the structure and by doing this it is actually increasing the dead load on the structure. Maybe you should check many structures are out there which are something like this. So, we keep on adding dead load and then that put more stress on the columns below and beams below. So, this again an inappropriate way of repairing we should remove the unwanted concrete and put new layers. So, that is so all these will be discussed in this course how we should really handle uh, the repair work so that you do not really create additional distress to the structure and you are actually helping the structure to survive better. Now, one other important point which I want to cover in this uh, slide is this when you say quality repair what I mean is the number of repair should be 1 for the entire life of the structure maximum because we already have some structures. So, we have to fix them and then after that we should not uh, you know end up in repairing it again and again. So, this should be the target. If you ever have a repair work make sure that we do not go back to the structure again to do the same repair okay, which is very challenging for which you need to really understand the root cause of the problem and scientifically address the problem rather than just you know doing getting some material and then patch up and then just doing a cosmetic repair. This is another example where I wanted to show you can see on the left side you have a building where the clothes are being uh, dried and the water from the cloth is dripping onto the beams below you can see in that little red box. So, the beams uh, near the staircase that is getting corroded and it was left like, like, like that unattended for long time allowing the corrosion to happen for long time and then eventually you know I noticed that after few uh, you know when this was there and then they repaired it just a patch repair just covering up with uh, you know remove the uh, old concrete cover and then uh, fill up that space with new, new concrete without really addressing the root cause. You can see on the picture on the right also you still have a lot of clothes which are being dried that means though the water from that cloth is dripping onto the beams and the beam or the steel inside those beams get sufficient moisture to continue corrosion. So, we should address these things either by making sure that there is a uh, you know a waterproofing layer around the beam. So, that water really does not get into the beam and corrode the steel surface. Okay. So, if you tell the people not to dry clothes there they may not agree with it, but you have to find an engineering solution. So, that we can still practice what we do, but at the same time not really harm the concrete structure. So, that is how the approach should be or repair uh, you know methodology should be chosen. So, this is that picture again a little bigger you can see how badly those beams are corroded uh, you know. Now, prevention is definitely better than uh, cure and it will cost you much less when you uh, compare that with uh, the cost for curing. In other words here curing is in you know like repairing the structure. So, if we can actually prevent this water from getting into the steel uh, you know uh, or getting at you know into the concrete beam and then reaching the steel that is the prevention which we are talking about. So, that the beam does not corrode and there is no need for uh, you know corrosion repair. Now, this will enhance the life cycle cost if you actually prevent uh, take preventive measures over the life of the structure the total cost uh, will be less. So, that is the life cycle cost I think we need to start thinking about not only the capital investment, but also the life cycle cost of uh, buildings. So, this is uh, in my next lecture also I will cover this uh, NACE impact report the cost of corrosion is very high it is about 3 to 4 percentage of DDP. So, objective is how can we minimize this 
cost of corrosion, can we do some quality repair work and quality construction like new construction and the repair of existing structures, so that we can minimize the cost of corrosion uh, in our country. So, that is the objective. Now, why we normally say in the previous picture I showed that you know there was a uh, building apartment complex where you are let allowing the corrosion to continue. What is the reason why we are allowing this to continue? Maybe it is because of the perceived risk associated with civil engineering structures. So, now before talking about that what is risk? Risk is a function of both the probability of failure and the consequence of failure. So, if you are talking about consequence of failure for example, the picture on the bottom you can see a one on the left side there is a building collapse many people died in that accident and on the right side it is actually a bridge collapsed. So, again uh, many people uh, died in that accident also. So, you can see these kinds. So, how do we rate the consequence of failure? It all depends on what type of structure you are talking. So, definitely we have a lot of structures where the consequence of failure can be significantly high and however, in general there is a different perception. The perception is that there is no significant uh, you know risk associated with civil engineering structure and that is the reason why we do not have this corrosion management team in many of the companies we talk about. So, I think this is you know at least after this course people should actually have corrosion management team at least one person per company uh, who will really think about preventive maintenance and look for potential problems and then address things way before, so that we can prevent the corrosion from happening and then give longer life for the structures. Now, uh, let me show you other sectors where for example, offshore platform or manufacturing units or chemical plants or oil and gas pipelines. So, all these structures if there is a corrosion on these pipelines and then the liquid leaks through this pipeline then the cost is like the risk is very high because the consequence of that failure is very high. Again it is attached with the money involved there. So, again so in these sectors because it, it is attached with the money the there is a perception that the consequence is very high and also the actual risk is very high. In the case of civil structures the perception is that the risk is very low but the actually there could be significant uh, significantly high risk. So, we need to sensitize uh, you know engineers on this factor and not only engineers the uh, uh, higher level managers decision makers who actually uh, you know allocates funds for uh, maintenance of uh, projects or you know st uh, structures. See most of the time that is what happened we do not have enough money. Uh, uh, to maintain the structure or enough money is not allotted to maintain the structure and to repair the structure. So, we keep on you know extending or delaying the repair practices and then eventually we end up in situations like this which is not acceptable or not favorable. So, we need to stop these structures from uh, you know uh, you know stop corrosion in these structures or take adequate measures so that both the structure and the users are really safe. Now, what are the questions we need to ask while selecting a good repair methodology? First thing is will the root cause of the distress, root cause that is very very important of the distress be addressed. Now, will the repair materials be compatible with the substrate concrete okay? and then will it need frequent maintenance that means more and more money required. Now, will it ensure safety, durability, cost effectiveness and aesthetics. So, all these are important questions to be asked while we choose a repair methodology and if you get a favorable answer for these questions from that particular repair methodology then we can go ahead. If not we need to re-look at uh, what repair methodology need to be uh, adopted. Now, a big message is that we need a transformation of our mindset and we need specialist repair specialist. Uh, to be able to think outside the box who are who can actually think outside the box and come up with the best possible and when I say best possible 
there is also another term which is durable best possible and durable repair solution. So, this is very very important and we need to change our mindset and we also need specialist. It is very important because why I say mindset is we think that you know, the perception of that risk which I discussed two slides ago that is very important. We also have very high risk associated with uh, a civil engineering structures. Now, another thing to look at is uh, how complicated when you talk about a repair work and you talk about a construction work, okay, new construction work. So, there are two types of fields, one is green field which indicates a new construction and a brown field which indicates a maintenance or a repair work. So, as you see on this cartoon here on the bottom left, you can see the guy at the uh, construction site, you know he feels that everything is easy because for his side there are no constraints. But in the brown field, he is struggling to do the repair because he has to work around the constraints. Okay. So, that is very, very important and very challenging. The repair works are very challenging compared to new construction works because you, you do not have free space available. You have to work around the system and you have to deliver as fast as possible because when you talk about repair, you are already you know. Uh, creating trouble for the functionality or stopping the functionality of the structure. So, you need to do the work and get out very fast from the uh, site. Now, let me now go into the what is in actually in this course until now I was talking about what why this course and what is the importance of this course, how you will think differently you know uh, once this course is done. And then now let us talk about the different modules in this course, we have split the course into about 8 modules. First, we will talk about corrosion of steel in concrete. I will detail uh, go through details on these 8 modules in the coming slide. So, let me just read through this. Embedded metal corrosion is one module, module 2 on deterioration of cementitious system, module 3 on condition assessment of structures, module 4 will be on strategies and materials for surface repair and module 5 is on surface preparation and protective treatments. Module 6 on waterproofing techniques and module 7 on concepts on structural repair and in that we will talk only about the concepts not really a detailed analysis and then module 8 which is a short module on how to design good tender documents or how to develop or document uh, tender specification so that you get durable repair and also we will show some uh, case studies on uh, repair projects. So, in module 1, we will talk about embedded metal corrosion, which will first in the lecture 1, we will talk what is corrosion, how it happens and then we will slowly move into what type of corrosion happens in concrete structures, which is carbonation induced corrosion and chloride induced corrosion. Then also we will look at different type of rebars, which are available in the market and how different the corrosion mechanisms in these rebars are. And you know uh, also like you know the whether the coated rebars are actually good or not, especially the non-metallic uh, coatings which are uh, widely used today. Uh, you will see in these lectures that they are really uh, not good considering the way in which those uh, rebars are used in construction today. Okay. Now, module 2 is on deterioration of cementitious system. We will look at various chemistry, chemical aspects, what kind of chemical reaction goes on in concrete structures in long term. And again, these are not, we will talk both about you know shrinkage, something which will happen in the very early stage, and also looking at delayed ettringite formation or reaction between the cement paste and sulfates and the uh, you know the uh, uh, alkali in the cement, and then uh, looking at aggregates also, how reactive they are. And, and then uh, uh, what can go wrong in concrete when there is a fire attack and how you know these different type of chemical reactions uh, you know uh, damage the concretes all that we will be looking at. In this module we will not talk about steel, we will focus purely on concrete system or you know cementitious system and what can we do uh, or oh, sorry understanding what will uh, what can go wrong uh, in the concrete part of it. Now, module 3 we will look at condition assessment of concrete structures and here we will talk about how in the laboratory we can test the quality of the concrete and also how in the field we can test the quality of concrete and also looking at different test methods that are for checking 
the quality of steel and concrete uh, not only concrete okay but for both steel and concrete and reinforced concrete system so we'll look at these uh, different uh, test methods available in the market module 4 we'll talk about strategies and materials for surface repair or near surface repair so you can see in the pictures here whether you are the blue over there indicates type of coating which you apply on the concrete surface or on the surface of the repair and the green color indicates uh, things which we do on uh, the steel surface for protecting the steel and the gray part or the black arrow indicates whether uh, you know how do we design the, uh, the concrete or the repair material itself it should have good flow properties, it should have good elastic behavior, all these um, both uh, fresh and you know long term performance uh, properties and also how well they can bond with the substrate. So, all these we will uh, look at and how to choose the material. So, that is the idea in this module. Module 5 is on surface preparation and protective treatments. So, when you talk about repair, once you understand what is the root cause and then when you are uh, going to repair the structure with some new materials and before you apply these new materials you should ensure that the surface of the concrete is also really treated well. Treated well means let us say you are imagine, imagine you are sticking a cello tape on some surface if there is a dust on that surface the tape is not going to stick very well to the surface. So, like that if you, when we place repair material to the concrete surface you need to actually clean the concrete surface first and then only you should apply new material. So, what are the techniques available to clean and how to ensure that the repair is durable and also at the same time looking at how to protect the steel from uh, corrosion techniques like cathodic protection and different types of cathodic protection and how can we remove chlorides from the concrete and how can we uh, realkalize the concrete all these will be discussed in uh, this module. And now, in module 6, we will talk about waterproofing of concrete. As you, I, I already discussed this picture on the left side, you can see multiple layers of overlay, roof overlay on this uh, particular structure, and which is not really a good idea. It is actually adding more weight to the structure, which induces, uh, which pro, you know, gives more distress or lead to more distress. So, how do we uh, prevent water from entering the structure? That is one thing and what are the basic principles of waterproofing and especially for both old and new construction and also when you talk about joints what are the new techniques available to prevent leakage through the joints uh, you know all these will be discussed in this module on waterproofing. Module 7 will talk about concepts on structural repair whether uh, you know can we actually take you know repair the concrete structure by adding additional structural elements or by modifying the uh, existing structural element or by strengthening the existing structural element either by adding more reinforcement or by adding more concrete around like enlarging the size or by wrapping the elements with fibers. So, all these will be discussed which are the better techniques for different cases and also some uh, precautions to be taken while we uh, do this so that the eventually the structural repair will actually perform uh, very well. Now, this I feel is very important this module 8 which is on how to design tender specifications or contracts because many people when we say talk about you know quality they say ok this is not available that is not available, but I believe that sometimes the reason is that we do not do enough homework in really thinking about the root cause and making sure that the proper choice of materials and design etc of repair is in, in place. So, we need to really make sure that we uh, do a very good uh, process of decision making. So, that we when you make these decisions on this type of repair and this type of uh, materials need to be used, we need to really know what goes wrong. And the uh, specification should be able to address those uh, things. Uh, it is not just when you talk about repair material get a con uh, you know concrete of this much strength. If it is actually a durability problem we should really have those parameters included in the uh, you know specifications or contract documents. So, that we can ensure that the repair is actually durable and also there is a concern you know sometimes people think whatever is given in the codes we have to follow 
and sometimes we find that codes are not really updated. So, we can actually as a responsible engineer you can actually look for codes from other countries also and pick the best possible procedure and you know if you get into the contract then there is no uh, harm or issue in following that uh, you know uh, that code which is available or you know as long as uh, you know you, the reason why uh, a specialist is required is exactly this it's only a specialist will be able to select the right code right material right design uh, etc for the repair and also they you know for codes or most of the codes are actually a regulatory document why i wanted to mention this is because for few until few years ago i was also thinking that this uh, uh, all these codes are actually mandatory document but they are not they are only regulatory documents and engineers have enough power or you know they should be taking responsibility in looking at uh, you know uh, better practices and try to adopt those practices bring into our country uh, you know and then let us build uh, you know good quality structures and make sure they are uh, durable also. Now, one way to get there is by practicing something called design repair contracts where both the design and the actual work is actually done by the same person. Because in the construction sector you have this multiple stakeholders. So, when something goes wrong they start blaming each other. So, blame game happens. So, how can we minimize that? So, you keep one person as a responsible person and you let that person or a company to do both the design and repair. So, then uh, you know it will be better uh, than and we will avoid this blame games and also we need to know what is the responsibility of each of the stakeholders. You can see on this chart here, we can see government authority, consultant, specialist, consultant. So, again you hear specialist that is a key person there and material supplier, nominated subcontractor, another subcontractor, main contractor. So, a lot of stakeholders are there all have responsibilities, but there should be one person who will communicate to each of these person each of these uh, stakeholders and is will be responsible. So, that uh, person will uh, ensure that the repair is durable. Now, again one more thing very important this course will equip the engineers to dictate the technical requirements. Okay. The equipping engineers in most of the most of the time you will see that engineers really do not know what a material uh, the properties of the materials are. So, it is very important when you talk about complex repair practices we need to really know how uh, you know what happened to the structure the root cause and what type of loads are acting both mechanical and environmental loads and then how to address them and how do we choose a good material or system to address those. Let us not uh, you know purely depend on the sellers of the material or the you know, suppliers of the material, but we should be looking at manufacturers and then demanding the manufacturers that I need a material like this which has these these properties uh, target properties and then let the manufacturer they are capable enough to provide you what you want, but the most of the time engineers do not ask we just choose from what is available in the field. Sometimes we have to also demand for better quality and better practices. Now, with all these in mind uh, you know ACI 562 committee has developed a code uh, on repair and rehabilitation and this is the front screen of that uh, document and this the ob major objective of this code was to establish good practices for evaluation, design, selection of material and construction and inspection of repair systems of repairs. And another objective was to raise the level of performance or to enhance the quality of repair. Then to establish clear responsibilities and authorities for all participants and stakeholders. So, if you are talking about let us say one example you have a, a repair project is going on, there is a designer and then another company who is doing the repair work like actual implementation. If something goes wrong the person who is implementing will start blaming the designer and designer will say they did not implement it properly. So, this cannot or should not happen. So, we need to be very careful in uh, you know assigning the responsibilities and uh, to all the stakeholders and designers also should think about how constructable the particular design which they are coming up with are 
and are they feasible for the particular uh, field conditions. So, they have to also think about it and then make sure that it is actually feasible solutions are provided. Now, also to provide the local building officials a ways to issue permits or you know select who could be a good uh, person or a company uh, or a firm to do the actual repair work. What are the you know criteria by which you can actually uh, you know select a team for repair work. Now, some other important things which I emphasize heavily is to ok let us know we let us say we know all the technical aspects but unless we are able to communicate that properly to the others or your colleagues you it will be very difficult uh, to practice and uh, communication is very very important so uh, i suggest you know to be to learn on how to effectively communicate technical stuff so there is a very good book which i found uh, by uh, oxford publishers and then you can see effective technical communication a guide for scientists and engineers specially made for the scientists and engineers. Okay. Now, this was written by Professor Barun K. Mitra in IIT Kharagpur. I feel it is a very good uh, book, very uh, crisply written and to the point book. Okay. So, you, you will really enjoy it is not a very big book and not that expensive also. So, this is something which I would suggest you to buy and read and then practice. Also, many of us we uh, you know do not give enough importance to drawing you know even in some curriculum nowadays engineering drawing is being removed. So, that is not something which is good and yes we have AutoCAD and other uh, you know various softwares available, but we need to learn really how to visualize things and then convert them into simple drawings. So, that you can explain your, uh, your ideas and concepts to other engineers working with you and also to the field workers. Uh, you know, so it makes it very easy to communicate if you can actually draw very well. So, it is something very important to be able to communicate properly and if you can communicate by drawing that is also very good. So, enhance this uh, quality on uh, you know how to draw and communicate things. Now, uh, this course when I started uh, teaching in IIT Madras uh, you know Professor Matthews was teaching this course before me. He suggested me to use this book, very good book, very well structured book. So, I really uh, you know appreciate uh, Mr. Peter H. Emmons to write this book. He has put a lot of uh, you know uh, real field application uh, examples of uh, field repairs and uh, I suggest if you can buy uh, this book, it will give a, you know a much better insight uh, into this problem. So, this is the book based on which this whole course is uh, developed. Of course, there are a lot of additions uh, to the course, but you can really see this. This is the photograph which we took with, uh, you know, Peter Emmons when he was in India on uh, a conference uh, in Mumbai. Now, there are some people who really influenced uh, my career significantly. This is uh, my uh, PhD and master's uh, guide or advisor, Professor David Trejo and uh, also Professor Ravindra Gettu and Manu Santanam at IIT Madras uh, with whom we actually developed one of the best uh, concrete materials lab in the country. And also all my other teachers who have helped me in uh, learning many things. And finally, the students, uh, the BTCM students, uh, you know a lot of students we have in our concrete one, one of the largest materials group. Of course, this has people from other parts also, but uh, thank to everyone and we will see you in class. So, we have uh, you know a very informative and educative course which is uh, you know uh, developed. So, see you in class. Thank you.